So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to sell from the stage in a way that feels joyful, energy rich, and with integrity, and that is not sleazy, cheesy, or pushy in any way. So the problem with selling from the stage and the reason so many speakers and coaches despise doing it is that it can come off as pushy. See, what happens is you have a certain amount of time to connect with an audience, convey value, and then make an offer or make a deal. When you compress all of that into a short period of time, it can feel like pressure. Most especially if you're at an event where a lot of other people are making offers, it can feel like a pitch fest and that can really turn people off. I don't know about you, but I have gone to event after event where I am just rolling my eyes because another speaker is making another pitch from the stage. And the problem with it too is that a lot of times it just feels totally inauthentic. Like they're trying to close anybody and everybody, whether or not the program is a right fit. So I take a different approach. Now, my approach might take a little longer and it might not be as lucrative in the short run, but I play the long game. This is a lesson that I learned from one of my mentors, Mark LeBlanc. It means that I am focused more on serving than on selling and that I am looking to play the long game and have a long vision of what this relationship could look like. So I'm not looking to speak in front of 100 people and get 50 people to run to the back of the room and buy a $500 course. That is a business model and for some people, I guess it's an effective business model. But I'd rather get two or three people people from that audience who are really a perfect fit to have a meaningful conversation with me and invest at a higher level. So the solution to this challenge is one that is probably pretty different from anybody else that you've heard talk about selling from the stage. So the solution, and my approach is a little unusual, I'll be the first to admit it. You know, probably if you're looking at selling from the stage, a lot of people will teach you a framework and here's how you make your pitch and you gotta go for the hard close and create scarcity and urgency. And all of those things are true, but they create that pushy, icky, salesy kind of vibe that we talked about earlier. So instead, what I invite you to do is to consider when you're on a stage in front of your ideal audience to take a more long-term approach, to play the long game, and to basically trust that when you do that, that when you get up there and you build trust with people and you give lots of value, that you will enroll them into that next step. And that next step doesn't have to be buy now, it can be something like, let's have a meaningful conversation about the programs and services that I offer. So my focus is instead of on trying to generate a sale right there, my focus is instead to generate a lot of trust and deliver a lot of value and then have a compelling call to action. Not a call to action that forces them to buy something in the moment, but rather a call to action that encourages them to set up a call with me. So just yesterday, for example, I did a two hour session, a two hour seminar on a topic and I gave so much value, more value than probably a lot of people would advise me to give. They would think, well, you gotta hold on to something for later. But what I've discovered is that when I am transparent and when, that I, when I give a lot, then people, that creates trust. And then I create a really compelling offer. So yesterday, what I did was at the end of my presentation, well, first of all, I should say, at the beginning of my presentation, I offered my slides and I offered some free gifts. And the reason that I do that is so that I get the email address to be able to follow up and nurture those, those relationships for the long haul. But I do that up front so that I don't hurt my offer at the end of my presentation. So at the beginning, I give them something really juicy like my slides and a roadmap or a worksheet or something really valuable to get them to enroll in my email list. And then at the end of my session, what I do is I offer a meaningful conversation. And not just any meaningful conversation and not a sales conversation, but I offer a business breakthrough call a business model breakthrough call. So specifically, my promise is that if they book that call with me, they will get a breakthrough around their business model. They will either identify some new revenue stream that they're not seeing, or they'll figure out how to create a new big back end with recurring revenue for their business. Now here's the kicker. I used to just offer that by itself, 
and I used to have an okay conversion rate. But recently I started adding something. I said, and if you book this call in the next 24 hours, I will also send you my client business model assessment. And if you fill it out before we hop on the call, I will give you some insights. I'll review the assessment and I'll tell you what I see. So I added a little bit of urgency to my call to action. I said, here, I'm going to give this to you. And if you do it within the next 24 hours, I will also give you this awesome bonus that I usually charge a lot of money for. And that was really compelling for people. And nobody felt like I was being pushy or salesy. Everything that I was giving, I was giving away for free. So if the way that I approach business and selling from the stage resonates with you and you're looking to create more big back end revenue opportunities from your speaking without being pushy or sleazy or making pitches from the stage, let's talk go ahead and visit superstaractivator.com slash go and sign up for a discovery call with me. I promise, as I said earlier, that whether you decide to work with me or not, you will get value out of this conversation. So you can either go to that website or click on the link below.